Hey, good morning. Welcome to uh, another episode of Crime Pace of Bonnie. That's in today I just come at you from the town of Bonnie in uh, uh, La Repubblica de Dominica uh, over here. We're just west of Santo Domingo about an hour. Uh, you know, we wanted to stop and check out the, the Fresa Hotel. Actually, I think it's the it's kind of like a walled compound for some, uh, you know, for, for, for some of the, the more aristocratic classes. But you can see you get the garbage and whatnot just outside the wall. That's some real nice mountains. Uh, out there in the distance. How is it that humans take the most beautiful places and always seem to just uh, make them terrible? You know, it's just the thing that we homo sapiens do. You got your rice in this communist over there in the background. That's, of course, uh, what Walter White made his uh, rice in from. Euphorbia ACA, the poinsettia family on that one. But I want to draw your attention over here to this uh, member of the milkweed subfamily of the oleander family, Apostanaceae. You can see these flowers are goddamn exquisite. Now, this is a non native plant. It's quite invasive in lower latitude areas in uh, the neotropics, okay? It's native uh, to uh, the African continent and parts of Asia, parts of Southern Asia. Uh, and uh, it's a colloquially, I think it's been called Sodom's apple. You got some weird biblical shit uh, going on there because uh, you can see there's the fruit. So you got flowers and you got fruits. But let's take a look at uh, the flowers. This plant is called Caltropis procera. Okay, and you can see it's a basically a small tree. Okay, it's quite beautiful, invasive as hell, but quite beautiful. And uh, of course, like most members of the milkweed subfamily, those flowers are just a massive buffet of uh, sugary nectar for the pollinators. Okay, but uh, also like many milkweeds, it's got quite a toxic sap uh, when you break the leaves off. You got those uh, heart poisons in there, those cardiac glycosides. You get kind of a, a mild farina on the leaves. Opposite leaves, of course, like uh, most members of the milkweed subfamily. But look, let's get close and just look at those flowers. Look at that. Look at those coronas. You can see they got the uh, stigmatic slit, just like uh, most, uh, most of the Asclepiodoidae, the milkweed subfamily, just like milkweeds. Stigmatic slit in a uh, somewhat complex uh, pollination uh, system going on here. See, look at this. So look at what this wasp is doing. Okay, so she's attracted by the nectar, and she's gonna dance around, dance around that little gynostegium, that column in the middle. And you got those five purple lobes. Oh, now she's taking off. All right. Well, let's take a, let's take a look. Oh no, there she goes. She's going back at it. See, look, look at the emerging. Look at the emerging new leaves. Just covered in that uh, velvety indumentum, mixed with a little bit of waxy farina. A little bit of waxy Dennis farina. You got the leaves opposite, of course, like most members of the milkweed subfamily. Oh, we already got your oleander aphids going nuts on there. You can see this plant is, uh, look at how blue and fuzzy it is. Just built for the heat. Built for those lower latitude areas where it, uh, where it thrives so well. Flower's just about to open right there. Okay, so looking at that flower, you can see you got that gynostegium in the center, that uh, pentagonal gynostegium, that pentagonal column, and you got five lobes surrounding that, and then the five petals surrounding that. And on the underside of the flower, you get the uh, five sepals, which you barely notice. Now, of course, to pollinate it, just like a milkweed, you got uh, that little stigmatic slit in between those five lobes. You can barely see it. See, it looks kind of yellow towards the top of that gynostegium. Pollinator's got to slip his foot inside there his or her foot it don't matter slip their foot inside there pull out the little boomerang shaped uh pollinarium or pollinia pollinium excuse me pollinium singular poll pollinia plural and then uh fly off with it and then stick it in to another stigmatic slit on another flower okay now these flowers are massive nectar sources for pollinators and that's why they get pollinated so efficiently and that's probably why they're so good at being invasive Okay, so one of these flowers, of course, gets pollinated and it turns into a massive fruit, which I'll uh, show you over here. Okay, so there's the fruit, then we're going to rip it off. And when we do, of course, it's going to cause uh, the plant to bleed that uh, nasty uh, toxic latex. Now, of course, this fruit is uh, not quite ready yet, but we could split it open anyway. Splitting it open, you could see you got uh, all those little ovules right there. 
Now, of course, it's a milkweed fruit, so it's called a follicle. Looks like uh, the coma, the uh, wind dispersal mechanism, is not quite matured yet. So it's not all, uh, all poofy and fibrous like it would be if it was mature. Let's see if I can get you a mature one here. But there you go. There are all the seeds. These are not, these are not ready yet. Uh, maybe a few of them are, the ones that are darkened. Okay, that's how, of course, how you can tell if a seed's mature. It'll be the darkened and brown. If it's still green, it's no good. But uh, you can see what's going on. And on the inside of that, there you go. There's the coma. Now, the, the, uh, the fluff on a milkweed seed is called coma. Okay, and it's analogous to a pappus on a sunflower or like a dandelion seed, member of the sunflower family. So you can get all the coma, the fibers in there and with the shit, not quite mature. And there's the little uh, paisley shaped seeds. Oh yeah, get it, get it. Juicy, get it. So this wasp is, uh, you know, diving into that nectar. Hopefully slip one of his legs in that stigmatic slit like a little trap door. Pull out a boomerang shaped uh, uh, pollinium, which consists of a corpusculum at the apex of that boomerang. Translator apparatus is the arms of the boomerang. And then, of course, the um, globs of pollen uh, on either side of that boomerang, the uh, pollinia. Well, he's, he's really spending time in there. He's really, you know, taking liberties with his own ass. That's where the pollen, uh, the pollinium come out of, and then that's where the uh, pollinium eventually have to go to to fertilize the flower uh, to produce one of those uh, egg-shaped fruits. So you can see that one's splitting open. You got the seeds in there. Just ready to, to dump out. Oh yeah, look at that. And of course they got the coma attached to them. The little, the little, that little uh, puff of floof. Help them uh, get dispersed around and, uh, you know, add some more uh, calotropus to this uh, nasty dump. Either way, so it's invasive, but, uh, you know, it doesn't, I've never seen it for monocultures. It normally it seems like it just uh, tends to take over, uh, you know, shitholes like empty lots next to expensive condos. So, anyway, there you go. Calotropus procera. Oh, look at that. That's nice. Wouldn't be an empty lot without human shit. You like how it's all desiccated and dried out in the sun? Could almost uh, pick it up and throw it like a disc. Look, it's my old friend, the uh, Waltheria indica, Malvaceae. Uh, another pantropical weed. Little tiny clusters of uh, Malvaceous flowers.